I want to tell you a story about something that happened to me last week when I had a situation with an item turned into a return and I contacted eBay and as you saw in the thumbnail, I was lied to. So I'm going to talk to you about that on the other side. So without any further ado, let's go. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is John from Flippin' Ain't Easy. And as I mentioned on the other side of the intro, yes, I was lied to, and not once, but, but twice, but I'll get to that part. So I sold this Japanese rice cooker a couple weeks ago, two, two and a half weeks ago. And this particular rice cooker, I'll show it to you here, um, it did not work. So what I did was I took the internal pot it was like about a 40 or 50 dollar value i think i sold it for about 40 or 50 bucks on ebay and that was a quick flip but this one kind of sat for a while because of course you can see it didn't work and it came with no accessories um, just the power cord to plug it in and it shipped in the original box and all that so i clearly put in the listing that there are no accessories and there is no internal pot with this particular sale you're just getting the main unit okay so I get a buyer no problem ship it out about three or four days later after shipping it I get an email and it basically said um, is there no pot included and so I replied back and I did a copy and paste from the listing um, no it's just for the main unit only no accessories or pot is included in this listing. So wouldn't you know, guess what happens next? Return request. Now, the return request wasn't like change mind or anything, of course, where the buyer has to pay for the shipping label. No, no, it's not that simple. The buyer puts missing parts. Well, how can it be missing parts when I advertise no parts or accessories at all no pot with this listing. So I accepted the return, but before I paid for the return label, um, my question was, and I, I reached out to eBay because this question of what can I deduct from the refund versus what can't I deduct from the refund was very much on my mind because it's obvious that this buyer didn't read the listing and it's obvious that I didn't include or advertise any pot or any other accessories with this listing. So I called eBay, actually had them call me back. And of course, I get a rip out in the Philippines. So to not waste the initial rep's time, I told them, look, I don't think you're going to be able to help me because this is sort of above your scope from my, my vast knowledge of dealing with you guys. I need to speak to someone in your escalations department. And while she needed a brief reason why I needed to speak to that department, uh, after I gave her that information, she put me in touch with a rep by the name of Melanie. At least that's the name she gave me. And she listened to what I had to say. She read the message that the buyer initially sent me before opening the return and she agreed that this was a false return and what she said kind of made me do a double take and that is she told me to allow the return request to time out because as you guys know you get like three or four days to approve the return label before eBay steps in right. But she told me to let this thing time out and what would end up happening is it would be found in the buyer's favor, right? And I would then get the email from eBay and I would call in and they would send it to the dispute team and they would basically change it to be in my favor. And I'm like, well, are you sure? Because I don't want any defects on my account. And honestly, if they want to return it, they can return it. My issue is the return label credit. Am I going to get a $6 credit or am I going to be able to deduct the actual return label cost from their refund? And she said, well, don't even do that. Um, go ahead and allow it to time out. So I got her name. 
I got the SR number, which is something you should always do when you deal with eBay over the phone. Get the name of the rep and the SR number. There's a long number after that, and that will identify the information that you were told, and it's a recorded conversation. So if you are told something, you can make reference to that SR number and have them go back and listen to it if you know that becomes an issue. So a, a day went by and you know you see that return request sitting there you're not getting any sales in my mind it's like you know what i don't feel comfortable with the information that the rep gave me i almost went through and just sent the return label and just told you know told myself to forget it so i called back got the escalations team again and she was able to read the notes in in my account and she came back and confirmed after putting me on hold what the initial rep melissa said to me and so i decided you know what just follow what they're saying it's all documented and we'll see what happens here now that date passed and of course i get an email from ebay stating that um the the deadline to respond is passed and they have sent the buyer a return label on my behalf okay so what the rep said was going to happen the, it was just going to be closed in the buyer's favor you know essentially keep the item and they'll get their money back um, never happened and what ended up happening was ebay sent them a return label on my behalf which creates a def defect on my account and i was like no 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 so i decided this is on a Sunday evening. I decided to have eBay call me. And wouldn't you know it, as luck would have it, didn't get the Philippines. Uh, I got a rep by the name of Melissa, and I believe she's out of the Utah office. Shout out to her because she was put into a relatively bad situation, you know, coming in at the end of a situation that you had nothing to do with, sucks as a, as a phone rep. but. She dealt with it just fine. She listened to the situation and she told me that you were given bad information. She basically told me that this was not handled correctly and the information I was given was wrong and the way I should have handled it simply was the way my gut told me to handle it and that was to accept the return and provide the return label. And then of course, as eBay will tell you, report your buyer, this, that, and the other thing. It is so hard to get a $6 return label credit. So I understand the temptation to deduct that return label from the shipping, but she confirmed to me, you're not supposed to do that either. Uh, eBay um, is there to give you a $6 return label credit. I mean, for most of these items, I ship larger items, a $6 return label credit's not gonna be uh, worth anything. But she went in behind the scenes and they took the defect off my account, okay? And what she did was, she went in and closed it, gave the buyer their refund, okay? And basically told me that my money was going to be okay. And because they never hold my funds on my account. Now, yours might be different because your account might be set up a little differently. It might be a newer account. You may not have as much activity, which is why eBay tends to hold funds for those accounts and the accounts that are more active and aren't as new um, don't have quite those restrictions. So I never had a, a hold on my funds with this return anyway. So she apologized and said it would be a training opportunity, um, but it's just like, you know, what would have happened if I would have contacted someone in the Philippines again uh, and, and maybe even that agent again? What would she have said? Here's the thing, you guys have had a lot of experience, just as I have, with dealing with these overseas reps, and there's absolutely no level of care. If you're listening to this eBay, you guys gotta do better, because to give bad information is one thing, then when that person calls up because that information doesn't seem right, and you double up on the misinformation, that to me becomes a lie. You're backing that other person up you don't take the time to even look at your own policies and then give that information out to your customers, which is us, the seller. 
So shame on you guys for that eBay. Thank goodness you have reps like Melissa in the Utah office that was able to step out in front of it, identify the problem, not back the rep like a lot of times phone reps will do. They'll back each other up, okay, and maybe try to give some kind of a sob story or some kind of uh, reason why it's still my fault and they're not gonna take care of me. But she took care of the situation. She took care of my account, which is really all I was worried about. And you know, if I didn't have a YouTube channel, I probably would have just accepted the return, sent the label, but I wanted to see what they would have said in my initial question was, are we allowed to deduct the return label shipping on a false return? And while that rep never really answered that question, she tried to be proactive, but she just failed to identify the proper answer. You know, it's not the wild, wild west eBay has access to their own policies and it just doesn't seem like they give their reps in these specialty departments. And you know, she told me when I questioned her, she told me that she does this all the time. This happens all the time. This is what she does. This is the kind of customer that we deal with and this is how uh, it has to go. Okay. And so I bought it hook, line and sinker and you know, shame on me for that. But to me, the moral of this whole thing is, you are going to get return requests that basically are not fair, okay? You're going to have to purchase those return labels and you may be 100% right as a seller. The buyer is trying to get around the whole return process and not having to buy a return label, okay? And you as a seller are going to have to eat that. The, the buyer is going to be able to give bad information as to why they're returning the item and you as a seller are just going to have to deal with it. And you as a seller are only going to be able to contact eBay to get a $6 return label credit. And good luck with that because I've only had one in two years and there's been many bad returns that I've had to deal with. So that's my story. I wanted to share it with you guys. Um, what do you guys think? Comment down below. Um, Again, like I said, a lot of times I go out of my way to get information, to create content for you guys, to find information out. Maybe instead of going through this whole long-winded thing, I would have just, like I said, provided a return label and have been done with it. But I wanted to know, I wanted the answer, and it wasn't until Melissa, the last rep I dealt with in Utah, basically told me, guys, you can't deduct the cost of the return shipping label from a buyer's refund, no matter what they say to eBay to get that return, to get off the hook of paying for that return label. So do me a favor, guys, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell. So when I do one of my impromptu live streams, you're notified and can be part of it like we did on Saturday. So just to give you guys a little idea, I'm dead tired. Um, we were out and about today. I think I told you guys we're gonna be going out to Death Valley, uh, which is the national park out in California, about two hours from Las Vegas. And it was kind of cool, you know, really spread out. I've never been there before. And uh, as you can see, we had some, some cool things that we saw along the way. Um, if you do go, it's worth the trip if you're in the Vegas area, the, the two hour trip you know, to spend a day out there. You probably need a full day, maybe two days to see everything, but we only were out there for about four or five hours. After you've lived in the desert long enough, things like that are cool, but um, they're probably not as cool to me as they, they are to someone that lives, say, on the East Coast that doesn't get a chance to see the desert too often. But definitely worth the trip if you get the chance. So guys, these kind of situations were eBay reps are dishonest and they do it to, to get you off the line. And I don't understand how they try to do it to get you off the line because, you know, they gave me a record number. They know the, the calls recorded. Who knows? But it's just all another example of how flipping ain't easy. And I want you guys to have a great start to your week and we will talk to you guys very soon.